If you have limited space in your sewing area, you can make a slide out ironing board that takes up zero floor or table space. It attaches to the underside of your table and slides out when you need it and stays out of the way when you don't. This project was sponsored by favecrafts.com. You'll need a piece of real wood that's at least one inch thick. Don't buy MDF because that can swell and warp when you iron with steam. The length and width of this board is up to you and is only limited by the size of the table you're attaching it to and the length of drawer slides you can purchase. My sewing table is only 20 inches deep, so my board can't be any longer than that. If you're buying the board new from a home improvement store, save yourself some time by asking them to cut it to the length you want. You'll have to cut the angled corners yourself. Also pick up a 2x4. You'll want to cut two pieces that are the length of your drawer slides. The width should be okay as long as it's between 3 and 4 inches. Unless you have a built-in table that sits flush against the wall, you will also need to cut a third piece to be the false back. To make the false back, cut the width of your board plus 4 inches. You'll also need to purchase a set of side mounting drawer slides. You can expect to pay between $8 and $15 for these. They come in lengths up to 30 inches. Choose slides that are about 4 inches shorter than the length of your ironing board. This allows you to angle the ends of the ironing board. Also pay attention to the load rating. I recommend choosing slides that have at least a 50 pound rating. Finally, you'll need screws that are long enough to go through the 2x4 and into the underside of the table without poking through the top of the table. I'm using an electric compound miter saw to cut the angled ends on my ironing board. You could also use a hand saw and a miter box. I'm making my cuts 4 inches down at a 45 degree angle. Next you need to decide whether you want a permanent or removable ironing board cover. If you want a permanent one, use a staple gun to attach your fabrics now, wrapping them tightly around the board and stapling on the underside. If you want a removable one, I'll make a tutorial later to show you how. Take the time to trace your ironing board on a sheet of wrapping paper to use as a pattern. Now attach the drawer slides to the long segments of 2x4. You'll be attaching the pieces with the drawer stop at top, the ones with the wiggly rectangle piece. Mark three of the holes with a pen, then pre-drill the marks with a drill bit. Replace the drawer slide and attach with the screws provided in the kit. Add one screw by the wheel as well. They should look like this. Next, we'll attach the other two pieces to the sides of the ironing board. They need to sit against a straight edge, so attach below the angled cuts. Again, mark and drill, then attach the screws. My table is built in, so I don't need to add a false back, but you probably will. Simply screw the last length of 2x4 to the back of the other two pieces of 2x4. Remember, the piece with the wiggly rectangle should be at the front and top so screw the backboard onto the opposite end. It's a good idea to check your work now by testing the drawer slides. The metal bars should fit over the wheels and your board should slide back and forth easily. Don't worry if your front drawer stop doesn't seem to be working. It needs to be upright for gravity to do the job. Now I'm going to pre-drill holes to mount my 2x4s to the underside of my table. You can get the tips of the screws started to make mounting easier. If your table is freestanding, you might find it easiest to flip the table upside down. Otherwise, you can crawl underneath and screw upward into the table. Make sure that the edge of the ironing board doesn't stick out when the board is pushed all the way in. Double check to make sure your screws aren't piercing the top of your table. Insert your ironing board into the slots and you're all done. Should you ever decide to remove your ironing board, simply unscrew the 2x4s and the tabletop will have no visible marks. Check back soon for a simple tutorial on how to make an ironing board cover for your new slide out ironing board. This project was sponsored by favecrafts.com. To see more project ideas and tutorials, including this ironing board cover, visit madebymarzipan.com.